So a bit ago I made this very bizarre video of me doing like single nostril flares and weird eye movements that some people thought was real, but of course it's a visual effect. So in this tutorial, I wanna show you how I did specifically the single nostril flare, which I don't think is anatomically possible. So uh, here's what we're gonna be making. Let me zoom in here. Yes, okay, <laughs> let, let, let's make it. Okay, so I'm inside DaVinci Resolve because I like it as a compositing program, but you can use whatever program you want as long as it has some tracking and I already imported in my footage, which is the same thing that I started off with because I'm a lazy fuck. So <laughs> uh, just find the piece of footage where you're doing the uh, nostril flare. Um, of course, like to begin with, I'm flaring uh, both nostrils and the idea is we are gonna freeze one side of it. So it looks like, you know, only one nostril's flaring. So I'm just gonna trim the footage maybe after the first nostril flare so you get like a good sense of what we're doing. And let's cut that right there. Again, you just want to isolate your footage because you don't want to be doing like a fusion composition or whatever on like unnecessary footage. You don't want to make more work for yourself. So just flare, flare, flare. I guess we could do three of them, four of them, whatever. We'll do three of them. Ideally, you don't move too much, like at least away from the camera because it makes things a bit tricky. Uh, but we could just do it up to here. And then, you know, you can just kind of repeat and generalize this effect. So uh, the footage, what do we got? It's just me flaring my nostrils and that's what we want to fix and let, let's just make that like a frame longer or something so you basically want to start before the you know nose starts doing the thing and end right after okay uh cool uh let's unlink this we don't care about the audio and by the way all this is generalizable to any program really so just follow the ideas not the button clicks okay so i turned this into a fusion composition the reason i did this is now when i go to the fusion tab well, when my laptop thinks about the universe and says, yes, it is now time, uh, we'll, we'll start with frame zero or frame one in some programs. Otherwise, it would start on frame like 1,300 because we trimmed it uh, later into it. But uh, we go into fusion and now let's do the thing. So again, the idea is we want to take a freeze frame of the nose not moving and we want to just track that onto here, okay? Uh, so let's start with the tracking, first of all. So I'm going to shift spacebar to add in a, a tracker node. Why? Because we want to track and that that's the way you do it. And we just want to track the movement of this side of the nose. Now, um, ideally, you don't want to use something like the actual nose, like any features here, because that's moving and we don't want it to flare. Uh, so maybe use the corner of it. Or in my case, I'm a big burly man. So we got a mustache to work with. And mustaches are easier because uh, they tend to follow the motion of the face, but they don't really like move with the nose. So you don't want to pick some hair here that's moving but the closer you pick here, the better, okay? So if you have a must, maybe grow a mustache before you do, that, do this, okay? Um, tracker, we're gonna track forwards, perfect. Um, you know, if your tracker doesn't work, then do a supervised track. Uh, but now we have the movement, and now all we need to do is take a freeze frame. Uh, to take a freeze frame, there's a bunch of ways to do this. You could even do it inside a fusion uh, with some special node magic, but I don't like that. We're just gonna go to the color tab, which is just gonna show our isolated part of the clip. I'm gonna go to the first frame, right click, grab still, and that is gonna give me a freeze frame um, of the first frame, right? So you just export this as a PNG, a JPEG, whatever, and you just call it something, right? You call it freeze. So this is just a good way to extract images from here at you know full quality and stuff like this. You don't wanna be taking low resolution stills, okay? Uh, now back in Fusion, I'm going to import in, if I can find it, I mean, I guess we could just type it out although it doesn't show up here. I don't like Windows, but I do like Windows. Take it, drag it, boom. Uh, now we have it, and here is our image that we can view uh, that doesn't change throughout the footage, okay? So this is a right uh, white button here is basically saying, what do I wanna see inside the viewer, okay? Uh, now that we have the freeze frame, we want to overlay this on top. So we have the footage, we're tracking it, and now with the green, we're overlaying this on top. And just so that it's visible, because right now we don't see a difference, uh, in the operation, make sure to set it to match move, foreground over background, okay? Uh, what this means is that the tracker information, like this location stuff that we have here that's moving, uh, this is what it's going to use to overlay this image on top, right? We don't see it because we need to either view this or uh, the final output. So again, what do we have? Uh, we have the freeze frame, but now with the motion of the footage. So you can see it's stationary, but it's moving as if, you know, it was attached to it. Uh, which it is in this case, okay? Um, of course, we don't want this to be for the whole footage. We just want to isolate the nose. So with our freeze frame, you just add in a mask. Again, this is kind of like a very simple effect, very powerful because, you know, you barely have to do anything, uh, but very simple. So here we go. We've isolated this part of the nose. If we want to like kind of see what's going on here, I'm going to do foreground only. 
Uh, so you can see we've just taken a freeze frame and it's moving. Let me go back to foreground over uh, background if I can fucking find it. There we go. Um, and now you can see kind of, I mean, we have some fixing up to do, uh, but you can see it kind of looks like one nostril is flaring because again, we froze uh, the other side of it. Okay, uh, some stuff to make it look real. You're gonna see a bit of skin shifting because it's a freeze frame. It's not moving with it. So you can sometimes see this boundary. Um, quick tip just to solve that, you wanna take your mask and you wanna soften the edge, you wanna feather it. And you just keep doing this until you start seeing like the nose back over here. And then you just wanna reel it back in. So in other words, you wanna find the biggest feather value you can use uh, that doesn't reveal the nose underneath. And that should uh, help out quite a bit, okay? Um, cool, so on frame one, we basically extracted the freeze frame, so there's no reason to do any kind of like blending in here. Like what, what I'm trying to say is if we were to blend this, there's no difference, right? Uh, whether we show the overlay or not, it doesn't matter. But as we go to like a different frame, uh, you can see, of course, the overlay matters because we don't want it to flare. Okay, what's the point? The point is at the very end of the footage, uh, we need to somehow transition back uh, to the original because we don't want to kind of have this freeze frame forever, right? We need to continue with the rest of it unless this is an isolated shot. But remember, we trimmed this and now there's more footage. Uh, so we somehow need to blend this back in. So I'm just going to, on this frame, I'm going to make it uh, invisible and then we'll go a couple frames back and make it visible. Um, so in other words, we have the tracked freeze frame and then it's going to blend right back in. Um, and now the final question is, you know, how do we soften this transition just a bit, right? There's not much we can do. Uh, but how do we help it out a bit? Well, uh, the secret for this is we are going to use a grid warp node. So just grid uh, warp. Again, shift spacebar to open this. And uh, this grid warp is going to let us distort the footage. And the nice thing is, since we're doing this before the tracker, the grid warp is also kind of tracked onto it. You can see the, the grid's moving. Okay. Uh, so with grid warp, what we're going to do is we're going to add more detail so we can control smaller parts of the image. I'm going to add in a keyframe. So basically saying do nothing. And then um, on the final frame, or not the final frame, but where we start to see the transition, let me just add another keyframe here. But as we get into the transition, uh, this is where we wanna do our blending, okay? Uh, so bring down the magnet distance. This is basically the size of the circle, what uh, we actually affect. And the idea here is we just wanna drag this until it's like overlaid with our original footage just a bit better. So I'm just lining up like high contrast areas of the nostril, etc. The better you do this, you know, the better it's gonna look, but you, you don't have to be perfect with it, especially if there's a lot of motion. Um, and again, it's gonna automatically add in a keyframe. So when we go back to here, it's gonna give us the stationary result, which is good because we do still want this to not look like it's doing the thing, right? Like we still want it to look like a single nostril flare, but then at the very end, it's gonna start like scaling up a bit. And again, the way you soften this transition um, is you also do some color correction, some more grid warping stuff. Uh, but in general, a good trick to blend uh, everything is you take your tracker, uh, you enable motion blur, so make sure you're in settings. So in other words, our freeze frame, which is moving around, is now gonna have a bit of motion blur. I'm gonna up the quality and lower the amount of blur. And by the way, you can also do the same thing for grid warp. You can have it uh, motion blur depending on this deformation. So again, high quality, uh, low samples. So. Um, let me just show you a sample. Again, this isn't like the best result. This is just kind of quick and dirty. Uh, but in essence, this is the effect. Uh, let me show you what it looks like. So we're just going to let that process again. Um, I'm using my uh, laptop, uh, which is garbage. I mean, it's not bad, but compared to uh, the computer I usually use, it takes quite a while. Like if I was using my computer, it would just blast through this. And you're thinking, oh, CG, default cube, why aren't you cutting away? And I say, it's less work for me to do it this way. <laughs> Uh, plus, you get to see the very valuable lesson of how long uh, this takes. So again, every single frame, it's going to go through this whole node network, hopefully cache it into memory. Although ideally, you normally you see this little green line down here so you can see what's up. How long can I talk? How long can I make it seem like the time isn't passing? Well, it's almost ending. I don't have to do it for much longer. Okay, so hopefully once this gets here, we get this to play all the way through. Come on. Come on. Yeah, there we go. There you go. Um, so you can see, single nostril flare. And then at the very end, it kind of scales back up uh, using the grid warp uh, just to return us to a piece of footage that we can continue on with. So again, uh, if you want to blend this a bit more, I recommend doing a bit of color correction because as your face moves, there's going to be a bit of color distortion. Um, but generally, people aren't going to notice because they're looking at this nostril. And if you don't believe me, think to yourself, did you notice it in the original video? 
because uh, that's you know what I did. Like the effect's pretty much the same, and I, I thought it was passable there. So, uh, long story short, uh, this is how we do the single nostril flaring. If you do it in a different program like Blender, you replace this tracker with going to the movie clip editor and tracking, and then you take the freeze frame and all this. Same process, same thing with using After Effects or whatever. But anyways, uh, that's the tutorial, and now we've reached this very critical point where you're seeing all these uh, anatomical parts of the nose on the right. No, they're, they're, they're patrons. Well, why are there patrons for this channel? Well, uh, this channel has a lot of patrons. I'm very thankful for that. Uh, what do they get in return? Why are they all there? Well, they get exclusive project files. So like, for example, this I'm going to upload as a DaVinci project file. You can use any Blender or whatever that project I've ever done that, you know, what since I've made the Patreon, you can get it from there with just a one month subscription. Um, additionally, they get access to exclusive tutorials that I do not post on either channel. So this is only for patrons. Uh, for example, next week after the surgery and all this, I'm planning to talk about how I did the eye thing, uh, which is a bit more complicated because there's pointer tracking and all this. Um, so I'm going to explain how to do that, but I've already done a couple exclusive tutorials in this month of March already. Um, exclusive tutorials to get behind the scenes, early access, stuff like this. So Patreon, Patreon, Patreon uh, is the place you want to be. There's a link in the description if you care. If not, you probably already closed it. Uh, but that's my sales pitch. Check it out if you're interested. I'd appreciate to have you on the team. But uh, thank you to all the active patrons. I hope everybody, patron or not, uh, learned something in this tutorial. And go make that single nostril flare, you degenerates. Goodbye.